I, um, I was just sitting here thinking about a monumental task we have, have before us, but the neat thing about living in Walden County is when we have these kind of challenges, we can all come together. We've gone through BP oil spills, we've gone through hurricanes, and I'm confident that we can find a way to put water and sewer on 331 so we can let our community thrive. So with that in mind, uh, I'd like to turn the program over to Bill Williams, and then I believe Larry Jones is gonna give us some further uh, information. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we certainly welcome each of you here. Um, we are streaming this uh, meeting live. So when you speak, if you would find a microphone and make sure the red button is in the up position, that will certainly help the folks in the room to hear us and uh, those watching on the internet. Um, one thing we as a county want to be clear uh, as we move into this meeting is um, City of Phoenix, City of Freeport, thank you for being here. But we want you to know that the county uh, is not interested in getting in your water and your sewer business. Uh, we're here to facilitate a mechanism that makes Walton County better as a whole, makes the city of Defuniac more efficient and better able to serve their customers and the city of Freeport the same. So it's our goal today that when we move from this place that we've come to an understanding that what's good for one is good for all. Now that, and there may be some situations that Freeport needs to deal with that City of Defuniac doesn't need to deal with or Walton County may not. But if we work collectively, we think we can find the best answers and best solutions to those situations that serves the uh, greater good of all of Walton County. You know, we worked for years and years and years to get 331 four-laned. It is happening. And before long, it will be a four-lane corridor. Without the appropriate infrastructure to support the growth along that corridor, um, we're going to lose out on some opportunities. So we hope today that this is an opportunity to begin a lengthy process of uh, collaboration and, and, and efforts that are good for all of the county, City of Freeport, City of Funiac included. Um, so um, while we'll probably get in the weeds a little bit today, I think it's important that we stay clear of that. Uh, we're not going to leave here with a solution. What we hope we leave here with is the ability to go to our legislative bodies and say, look, we're together on this. We understand the importance and the gravity of the opportunity that's before us with some of the funding opportunities that are there and that have recently presented themselves that they quite frankly won't come around again. So it's, it's vitally important in my opinion, I believe the opinion of the board that we move forward hand in hand, uh, understanding that um, there are three entities involved. And so some may have to give a little, to gain a little, uh, but I could, and again, I hope I'm speaking for the board when we say that we're committed to seeing this project through because it's that vitally important to the good of the county. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Billy and Cliff and they can share some uh, thoughts they've had. And, and, uh, but again, uh, we're, we're excited to be here and it's the day that we can move some things forward that'll be great for all of Walden County. We're going to start your time over, Billy, the three minutes that we normally. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, Thank really, you. we're glad to have Billy here today. I, if you don't know, his wife was in an, an accident, and we're believing for a miracle, and we're glad he's back with us. Well, and I, I do thank all of you, both uh, as friends and as colleagues. I don't want to get whacked up in this and mess me up, but um, your prayers and thoughts have been great, so thank you. Um, let me regroup. My 10-gallon hat's a little 5-gallon low, so if I'm a little slow on my saddle, y'all give me some, some slack. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Um, basically what Larry echoed, I, I say to all of you as the elected bodies and the leadership uh, of our community and the citizens and the folks that may or may not know what we're doing, I would echo 100%. This is the most transformational thing I think that these bodies collectively have the opportunity to do. Um, 
We have some atypical opportunities. We have some atypical challenges. And I think Larry set the stage very well that if we get into the details or we kind of shoot this before it starts moving, um, we're limiting ourselves. So I ask you with kind of an open mind and an open heart to kind of look where you want your city and where you want your counties to go um, as we come in with it. I'll give just a couple minutes of backdrop. Um, the staffs of both the county and the two cities, and we're not leaving Paxton out. Uh, we've talked with Paxton a little bit. We're just kind of coming to a theater uh, near the two of you first, uh, and then we'll, we're going up to see them. So we will certainly outreach to them. But all of this is a uh, aftermath scenario of, and again of timing, this need would be here without it, but of timing and the legislative session that's coming up. Uh, I've presented in front of your bodies before, so I won't spend a lot of time doing that. But the number one, and again, we're looking at a lot of things, but the number one focus is to have a strategy, as Larry indicated, and we have gone to the legislature. They love the idea of which we're, we're working on with Brad and Gaynor and all the folks that are there now. Um, we're trying to put Walton County above everyone else that we have a plan, that we can work together, we can work in concert with each other politically, technically, and long term. The one thing that the Restore Act and the BP dollars that were very frustrating, like being paid over 15 years, has also taught us some lessons of linear thinking and long-term planning, and that this is what this project is about. So what my goal is to arm the commissioners and city commissioners um, as we go into this legislative session, because believe me, the incoming speaker wants to see elected bodies more than they want to see lobbyists. All of you are going to be asked to play a part, not just in agreeing and deciding on this plan, but defending this plan uh, as this comes up. We don't know how all these dollars are going to outplay. There's very philosophical differences between the House and the Senate and the governor, and I'm not going to belabor that point today. But we're going to be prepared with the best plan that we can give them, and we think we've got the, uh, the preliminary section of it to talk about today. So the goal today is taking all the work, and we've been at this, as most of you know, for about six months with your staff and with the engineers. And I will say Dewberry and Anna and Cliff, they've been great with putting this together. Um, the city of Defuniac and the city of Freeport advanced dollars when I know budgets are tight to look at these plans. You've been great partners with it. You've allowed us to work with your staff. And so, again, I think we just take the high road. Our goal today is to talk about a structure, and the attorney uh, and, uh, of both the county and the city and EDA are going to talk about that, that we could go to the legislature with and say we have a unified body. Um, and even though there's a thousand-led creature called details right up underneath that, we want to make sure that we can go as a unified front and that we can do our housekeeping and our work together here in rooms like this and in your board meetings as we advance. A couple of key timing issues, as I've talked to a lot of you individually, um, we're under a tight frame. There are an organizational meetings come January. They're already getting committee assignments and all the things that are there. Um, the Speaker of the House has said you have to introduce whatever you're asking from day one. And all of you are probably familiar with the CBER, which is a community budget issue request. We're going to fill out a community budget issue request. They may change that format, but we want Brad Drake to have exactly what you want when he goes to the legislature day one because of some rule changes that they've done at the House. So the target, uh, real quick, and then I'll turn it over to Cliff, is remember when I told you that there was a $2 billion settlement with Pam Bondi in the Attorney General's office, um, and that was to be paid over 15 years. Um, we have our first payment that has come to the, to the state coffers or general front in July. That's $400 million. So by current statute under the Gulf Coast Corridor Act, 75% of those dollars are to be expended within the eight impacted or disproportionate counties from basically Wakulla to Escambia. We want to make sure that we are presenting our best foot to go after that $300 million. And our board, the Board of County Commissioners, voted some time ago that this was their number one priority, which was the wastewater expansion upon 331. Obviously, it's the lifeblood of the, both the cities. So I think we have a common denominator as our starting point. Um, so today we're going to walk through that. Cliff's going to describe the technical plan to you, um, some cost scenarios of, and again, they're, they're preliminary. 
but then we're going to talk about the structure and ideas. This is a very open format. We want you to ask questions, uh, get as much information, and we'll continue to meet with you individually or as groups. But what we're hoping is that um, at the end of this, there is a general consensus to come to a basic memorandum of understanding that we're going to work toward this together. And as I've mentioned, like to you, Mr. Eddie, et cetera, come January, your bodies are going to have to make a decision of what you want to do next. Uh, if, if you choose to go after these dollars and you see this as the vision. So it's very complicated, but we're going to talk about primarily structure and the technical planning of it a little bit today. But again, ask any questions that you have. And with that, I'll turn it over to Cliff. Thank you, Billy. Uh, my name is Cliff Nauer. I'm with Dewberry Preble Rish and uh, appreciate the opportunity to be before our uh, city council members, our mayors, and our commissioners. Uh, I knew when Billy told me it was a two-hour meeting and his part was six minutes that uh, kind of where he was headed with that whole thing. Uh, but fortunately today, uh, I've got an easy role. Uh, I think of myself as uh, Switzerland today. Uh, we have an unbelievable opportunity uh, for the county and for the citizens of this area to try to uh, try to get utilities uh, on 331. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people didn't know and don't know even today what actually utilities we have on Highway 331, what areas could develop now, uh, what areas can't develop until future utilities are put in, and so. I'm going to take a few minutes and do a high-level view of the Freeport system, a high-level view of the Defuniac system, and then I'm going to go through uh, kind of about a 10 or 15-minute presentation that will get us into the weeds a little bit and give you a little bit more detail. And then we're going to come back out of the weeds and we're going to go over the cost estimates. Uh, and so really my part today is kind of the technical side. and. Uh, I'd say for probably the last five or six years, we have been looking into, working on, and dealing with utilities on 331. So from a uh, high-level perspective, um, there's uh, only two systems involved. There's the uh, City of Freeport system and the City of Defuniac Spring system. The City of Freeport system, as you can imagine, only has two components, water and sewer. Um, the uh, sewer first, uh, the city currently has a sewer treatment plant that handles about 600,000 gallons a day is its maximum capacity. Uh, they currently operate at about 300,000 gallons a day uh, pretty routinely. And so the city of Freeport runs at about 50% capacity um, uh, very routinely. And so they have a small amount of capacity left. Uh, before they would have to move forward with uh, building a new plant or expanding their existing plant. And so kind of the threshold that DEP uses is when you reach 75% capacity at your plant, uh, you need to be digging footers for a new plant. And so there's, there's really not a lot of capacity left in their plant. In terms of uh, sewer collection, right now uh, from Choctahatchee Bay north, uh, really to County Road 3280, there's very minimal sewer capacity uh, because the lines that are in that area are very small. I'm going to show you some more details on that in a few minutes. Uh, once you go uh, north of uh, County Road 3280, uh, again, very minimal sewer collection really all the way to Highway 20. Um, we were able to service the new public that's recently come in. And there are a few small businesses that are on, on sewer in that area, but very small lines and very small capacity. So the second part of Freeport is their water system. They have an unbelievable amount of water that's available. Uh, they have fantastic wells, they have fantastic water, and they have unbelievable capacity. What they don't have is a, an abundant distribution system on 331. And so we do have water on 331, but we don't have water on 331 that would be able to handle, for example, a uh, 50,000 square foot commercial building that needed, uh, for example, a sprinkler system. And so it doesn't take a lot of large commercial developments to overrun 
uh, the capacity of a water system. And so we do have water on 331. It is minimal, uh, but we have plenty of capacity in our wells. And so that's kind of my overview for the city of Freeport. Uh, the uh, city of Defuniac Springs, uh, and I apologize, north of Highway 20, we have a, uh, a water line and a sewer line that go to the, uh, uh, to the post office. Once you get north of the post office, there's very, very minimal utilities uh, all the way to the Defuniac Springs uh, franchise area. And I'm going to uh, show you guys the franchise area in just a minute, and we'll talk about it too. Uh, Defuniac Springs uh, currently services the new fire station that was recently built. Uh, they also service the uh, hospital with water and sewer. Um, and from there north, they're very small lines, uh, really until you get to, uh, you know, where the uh, KFC and all the restaurants are up there is where their lines start to, to gain some capacity. And so you've got a very long stretch on, uh, in the Defuniac Springs service area that has uh, minimal capacity and uh, probably uh, two-thirds of the stretch in Freeport has no capacity. So that's kind of my aerial view. I know that's uh, probably more words than you needed, but uh, if we could, I'll go through this briefly. It's going to give you guys a little bit more detail on what utilities are where. And then uh, I've also got my uh, costs wrapped in, up in this as well. Uh, and just for a big picture idea, um, to uh, put in the water, Water and sewer from the Choctahatchee Bay all the way to, uh, really, to the uh, Defuniac Springs uh, sewer plant, you're looking at about a $27 million project, okay? And so $27 million would be full build-out of the commercial that's uh, currently on Highway 331 that could be anticipated. Um, we think that that's probably 20 years down the road. But the way development's happening right now, it could be 10 years or less. Uh, and so we would like to be prepared for it. Uh, and so our estimates are based on full build-out of the commercial that's on 331. That's kind of a key, a key point. So uh, with the uh, city of Freeport uh, uh, and uh, city of Defuniac, um, we've gone through an exercise to determine um, costs and improvements that would be required to service their franchise areas. And so, for example, uh, this is a, a, a workshop agenda that we had with the city of Freeport. Go ahead. This is your franchise areas right here. Um, you see the uh, Defuniac Springs franchise areas in pink. No, uh, well, they're both in pink. So uh, he is circling on the Defuniac Springs and uh, Freeport service areas to the south. Okay, go ahead. So uh, one of the things that's very important to all cities and counties is your capital improvement project list, your CIP list. Um, the city of Freeport has been uh, very um, uh, progressive about trying to get their CIP completed, and uh, utilities on 331 are their top-ranked project on their capital improvement projects list. Uh, the city of Defuniac Springs has done similar um, maneuvers or exercises, and uh, I do know also that the county recently had their number two, I think, ranked project for the county was uh, water and sewer on 331. And so I think the city, the county, and uh, uh, both cities and the county recognize the importance. Go ahead. Uh, one of the one of the items that's important to uh, try to leverage as you guys move forward with trying to uh, make any kind of improvements is the tools that are in your toolbox. Uh, the city of Freeport is currently the only city that's a uh, city of economic critical concern, which is a huge benefit when you're going after grant dollars. Um, they uh, qualify for just about all the grants that are available, and uh, uh, economic critical concern is a huge leg up for them. Um, so as kind of a, uh, as kind of a big picture item, uh, 331 utilities, water and sewer from highway 20 south all the way to the bay, uh, is about a $10 million project. Um, that's a, uh, uh, cost estimate that, uh, that shows you the breakdown of that. Um, on 331, let's see, 
Well, where are we at? So on 331 South, from Highway 20 to the Bay, we broke it into five different segments. Uh, you can see the uh, blue, magenta, red, yellow, and green running down 331. And then you see the big green line that, that goes south all the way to the uh, plant at uh, Freeport is, is what we call our off-site improvements. And so we broke it down into all of these different phases. Go ahead. Uh, so the first phase was from the Choctahatchee Bay to Jolly Bay Road. We looked at the uh, land uses on uh, each one of the uh, segments. Go ahead. Uh, we looked at the uh, flood, uh, flood maps for each one of the segments. And then we looked at all the existing utilities. And so uh, as you go through each one of these segments, we've broken down uh, the land uses to figure out what capacities are needed, uh, the environmental issues based on the floodplains and the wetlands, and then also uh, taken uh, the maps of all the existing utilities to figure out what improvements needed to be made. Uh, for each one of the segments, we've come up with a typical section that shows the existing utilities and all of the proposed improvements. Go ahead. This is the next segment, segment two. Go ahead. Jolly Bay Road to 3280. There's not a whole lot there right now. There's a small force main. Um, and the majority of the sewer uh, for that area goes down 3280 and runs up the center of Old Jolly Bay Road. There's a large force main. Uh, all the way up Old Jolly Bay Road. That's your land uses. There's a lot of commercial there. Uh, there's quite a bit of wetlands as well. Um, segment 2 from 3280 headed north. Uh, again, there's minimal utilities on 331. Uh, this is uh, the typical cross section that shows as we head further towards Highway 20, our utilities are getting larger and larger as we go. Segment 3 is to LaGrange Road. Same thing, uh, there's a, uh, quite a bit of uh, commercial property. And then uh, there's your wetlands and floodplain. Uh, segment three has more utilities uh, than uh, the previous two segments, but again, they're small lines. You have, uh, for example, uh, a four inch force main and uh, water lines that are uh, six inch water lines. And so significant development uh, would ne never be accommodate, accommodated by the size of the lines that they've got. Again, the typical section showing what needs to be put in. Go ahead. Segment four would take you to Riverwalk subdivision. Uh, again, you're still in the uh, county. You're not in the city limits yet. Uh, Riverwalk subdivision has a uh, easement that goes all the way through it across Four Mile Creek uh, that goes to a master lift station in Hammock Bay and then to the city's uh, plant. Again, lots of commercial. Uh, and in this area, there's very little wetlands, so there's good opportunities for commercial development. Uh, again, the, the uh, existing utilities are, are minimal in this area. And that's the typical cross-section. Go ahead. And then Riverwalk to uh, State Road 20 is the, uh, the last segment. Go ahead. And so, as you know, uh, the Publix just recently came in, and we were able to service the Publix without a problem. Um, but there's not a lot of other um, development that can happen in that area without some significant improvements. Uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges that we uh, looked at for uh, trying to make improvements to the city of Freeport is their off-site improvements. Um, right now, the uh, existing force main that goes under Four Mile Creek is not far from uh, far from capacity, and so the, kind of the first step for the city of Freeport would be to make improvements from Highway 331 all the way to their plant. And so the uh, Phase One improvements would include a uh, new force main to the plant, a new lift station at 331, and a new directional bore underneath uh, Four Mile Creek. So the uh, phase one, which is kind of the first step for improvements to the uh, city of Freeport, is about a $6 million project. 
Uh, once the utilities were uh, tied into the city's lift station, then the other phases would be able to proceed pretty easily. Go ahead. Um, the uh, uh, the, the uh, off-site improvements are about a $6 million project, and then from uh, Highway 20 uh, north to the uh, to the uh, franchise area line is about a $9 million project. Okay, so this is a breakdown of all the utilities north, uh, I'm sorry, uh, north of State Road 20. Go ahead. These are uh, kind of the assumptions that we put together for when we develop the uh, capacity requirements for those utilities. And uh, essentially, uh, the answer, the final answer after you uh, scramble all the numbers is that the city of Freeport needs right now uh, a minimum of a 1.2 million gallon do a day plant. Uh, we would be able to upgrade that plant to somewhere around 2 million gallons. And uh, their plant cost is somewhere around 12 million. And so kind of, uh, kind of the big picture would be a $12 million plant, and phase one would be about a $6 million uh, project to provide improvements to service 331. We've looked pretty, uh, pretty good into their uh, wastewater treatment plant that's existing right now, and uh, there are some constraints. Um, there's uh, adjacent wetlands and adjacent floodplain. Uh, but based on our preliminary estimates, we believe that they would be able to fit uh, an additional 1.2 uh, million gallon a day plant. Um, funding for a new plant for the city uh, could come through uh, the state revolving fund, which is the uh, DEP. Uh, it could come through USDA, through their rural development program, uh, or it could come from other means as well. And so. The city, the city's in great position for both of those programs. Um, uh, for example, uh, through the SRF program uh, and meetings that we've had with uh, DEP, they would be eligible for a grant uh, that would be somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of the cost of the project. And so, uh, for example, um, uh, you know, if you were able to get 60 to 70 percent of the cost of the project paid for through grant and it would only be a 30 percent out-of-pocket cost it would be a, a huge win of course um, the uh, existing facility uh, does have some adjacent land that the city uh, um, may be able to um, uh, purchase or trade for at some point but we believe right now that there's adequate room to be able to build a new plant there go ahead this is uh, just an overview of their property that they own out there. And uh, if you go to the next slide, you can see that a large portion of the 40 acres that they have out there is, is uh, wetlands and floodplain. Uh, here's some information on the state revolving fund program. Uh, the, uh, um, the city has uh, uh, submitted for uh, some grant money already for um, developing the project. It's a, uh, uh, a grant that would help with the preliminary engineering that would be required on the project, and they should hear sometime in February or March if those grant dollars are uh, approved. They also submitted for and got approval for a $50,000 grant from the Water Management District to help with their water portion of the project. Good. So uh, uh, the overall, overall picture for uh, the city of Freeport and if you flip to the last one there for me, no, yeah, not there. Okay, awesome. So uh, the overall project is a uh, $27 million project. The uh, uh, city of Freeport and the Defuniac Springs improvements that would handle full build out would be approximately $27 million. That slide right there is the one that's I was looking for. Um, it's got a breakdown of the cost for each one of the phases and uh, so you can see uh, overall 27 million. The first phase to be able to get the utilities offsite is about 6 million, and the city's new plant is somewhere around 12 million. And so I know I've probably taken up more time than I was allowed, and I apologize for that, but just to give you an idea, uh, you're looking at a $27 million project overall, plus the city's $12 million plant. 
And so I'll be happy to answer any kind of questions you got uh, and uh, uh, certainly have a lot more detail that I could give you guys um, if it would be of any use to you for what you're trying to do today. Thank you. Cliff, Cliff, <coughs> would you go over them last two figures? You said 27 plus 12? Uh, 27 million would get you water and sewer all the way to the uh, to the plant in Defuniac, all the way to the north edge of the bay, water and sewer, plus an additional 12 million for the city's plant. So that, you know, you're pushing 40 million bucks at full build out. And so the reason uh, I kind of stress the offsite improvements is because the offsite improvements are really what needs to happen before you put the rest of the lines in on 331. You need to be able to have capacity to the plant with service out in front of Riverwalk on 331 to be able to tie in north and south. So I think it's a great opportunity uh, for uh, any type of funding that anybody can get. And uh, I think that the, uh, you know, that the city would be excited about any kind of opportunities. Uh, both the cities would be excited. But uh, at the same time, uh, you know, they have tools in their tool belt that will really help with any kind of grant funding. And so I've stressed to uh, both the cities uh, to uh, try to use all the tools that are in their tool belt to try to get all the money that we can. Very good, Clay. You want to uh, basically the, now we're moving into the more structural side of it. Um, I think it's apparent that if any one of these entities of the three that are sitting here were to look at this alone, this is a massive undertaking. And that's where, again, we stress going back in. And so through EDA and through individual meetings with you, we've been discussing potential opportunities uh, with the Florida legislature and what is allowed under statute. And, you know, in 2012 and 2016, they created a lot of public-private partnering and opportunities where they look for these scenarios. And I think both Mark and Clay would certainly be better in that area. But with what we're faced with, the structure now is becoming so very, very clear, I hope, that we have to do this together um, in the process. So with that, I'll turn that to Clay and Mark, and they can give us sort of the legal overview of what's available to us at the state statute level. Thank you, Billy. I think as everybody's heard, we have a very big goal, and it's a very big project with a very large dollar figure attached to it, one that without all three governmental bodies at these tables coming together is probably not going to happen. Now, the good news is that I'm not about to ask the, any of the boards here to decide what the vehicle, what the mechanism of accomplishing this is today at your next meeting or any time in the near future. Uh, Billy's right. We've looked at this for a couple months now leading into this and what our options are. You have right at 31 different available options to form various partnerships that have been used and are legally valid around the state of Florida. And everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. We spoke with CFO Atwater's office about three weeks ago. Um, they have referred us over to the DEO, and they're working with us. What they've told us is the state stands ready, both at CFO Atwater's office as well as the Department of Economic Opportunity, that once they know that the city of Freeport, Walton County, and the city of Depuniac are in accord on a common goal for water and sewer up and down 331, they're going to provide us every opportunity to help. They're going to provide us all the guidance to come and conduct workshops with us to help us figure out what that mechanism is. So for today, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible, and it's always dangerous you're turning over to the attorney after Billy's gone and Cliff's gone and you were told you had a two-hour meeting and they've done 30 minutes, so I'm sure you're starting to worry. I am going to keep this short, though, because if everybody, when we walk out of discussion here, is on the same page, that we want water and sewer from the Choctatchee Bay to the city of Depuniac sewer plant. If we want that to happen, we have to take steps now. That's the problem. We can't wait until January. We can't wait until March. We can't hope for the next funding cycle or the next budget cycle. We have to have something to allow our representatives, to allow our lobbyists, to allow the people who will be speaking on behalf of each of our entities to go do their job, both at the state and federal level, for grants and legislature, legislative appropriations 
to bring some level of funding back or at least get us in that cycle. If we're not ready to go January 1, 2017, I'm going to tell you all something right now. We, that ship sailed. We've missed it all together. So what we have put in here, among a number of things, is Chapter 163 of Florida Statute, and that's the interlocal, that's where you have the authority to enter into interlocal agreements. Towards the back of your packet, you see special districts. And there are a number of different ways we can get here, be it through an authority, be it through a special district, be it through some hybrid board that functions as one or both, be it through the creation of that entity and a public-private partnership that would operate with another entity to operate these type of facilities. Those are things we're going to have to determine. If we get this money from the legislature through the Triumph money or through the money that came through the negotiated settlement with BP, that's a very different mechanism than if we're pursuing grant money. So we'll have to decide in the months going forward whether the entity that comes out of this partnership is just something to receive the money and allocate it to the individual governmental entities to build out, whether it's going to be an operational entity that's going to collect the money and operate some concurrent system between the two. And frankly, we don't know that answer, and no one here, from Mr. Nauer with Dewberry Preble Rish, Mr. Williams, um, and what he's done for us with his act, with his job as the Store Act Coordinator and Interim Director of the EDA. None of us can tell you that. Your attorneys can't tell you that. That's going to be a policy question. But what I am going to tell you is that what we hope comes out of this meeting, and what you'll hear from me again after discussion is, we would like to see each government here at your next meeting, or at the latest before the end of December, agree to an interlocal agreement that says that all three governments agree that water and sewer from the Choctatchee Bay to the city of Defuniac on 331 is a paramount goal for this county. That it is the single largest item we want our legislative delegation to be looking out for. That if they're going to do something for us, this is it. That there is nothing that the three of us would come and say, well, Freeport likes that, but we want this more. And the Puniac likes it, but we want this more. And the county likes it, but we really need this. We go do that, we're separate entities, and we're not going to have the weight. The one thing we've been told time and again, both on federal dollars, state dollars, grant dollars, what is being prioritized are local governments that come together cities and counties that will join service districts, that will have service districts that abut or merge, counties that are willing to look across geographic boundaries, anything that looks like it is a regional or larger than single governmental enterprise opportunity is what is going to be prioritized. We know that going in. So what we'll be presenting to you and what I hope we can come out of this meeting with is an understanding that we don't know what the vehicle is going to be. We don't know if this is going to be a utility authority. We don't know if it's going to be a special district. But we know that day one, we're going to pursue that opportunity. We're going to figure that out. We know that we want that agreement in place, and we know that we want to have a unified voice going to our legislators. So what we'll be asking is that everyone enter into an interlocal agreement. Mr. Davis and I would obviously work on preparing that if that's what the board's wishes are for us to do collectively and have that back to you at our next meeting. If you look at those special districts, I'm not going to read all of this to you. I'm certainly not going to read the Florida statutes to you. You'll see that there are two big differences. You have your special districts that are created by special act that requires the legislature to create it. Those are the people who serve on those boards are generally elected or appointed by the governor. Under 163, under the Interlocal Government Agreement Act, what we can come up with is a board that we create internally. We don't need the legislature to create it for us, and we can define how the members of that board are appointed. I'm not asking you to define that now, but if we lay out an interlocal agreement between the three of us soon, it allows us to have that unified voice to the legislature, and it's laid the foundation for what the next steps are. And then the public-private partnerships, I've told Billy in my discussions, certainly we're going to need to look at public-private partnerships, be it with service providers, be it with our utility providers in this area, Choco, 
Gulf Power obviously have a very big interest in seeing development up and down 331. Real estate landholders and development. All of our stakeholders in the community are going to have interest in this area. And that's what this vehicle would be able to go do. Whereas it's not the city of Defuniac going to talk to somebody about a project that's just south of our service area and why are you interested in that. And it's not Freeport asking, well, what are we going to do a little north of our service area? It's not the county who doesn't have a true water and sewer service area saying this is our goal and somebody saying, well, you don't have a water and sewer service area. Why are you concerned with it? We now have one joint initiative. We can then pursue those public-private partnerships to develop this and present that unified voice. So certainly I'm here today. Mr. Davis is here as well. We'll be glad to answer any questions you have about what some of these vehicles can look like going forward. But I would hope today that we can all understand we're so early on in this process, we can't tell you what the right vehicle is. We just don't know that yet. But we know we need an interlocal agreement. We know we need a document and a unified voice that says we want this. And here is our governing document that everybody signed on to that says this is the case. So when we lay it in front of our legislators, when we go to grant agencies, we have one solid voice. Everybody at this table brings a lot to the table in terms of what their system are, in terms of what they've already pursued, in terms of what growth opportunities are there. And so it's got to be less about what can each of us individually do going forward to what can the three of us do collectively. And so that's why we're here. That's why we want you to understand we're not trying to tell you this is the right option. The state's going to help us with trying to tailor that once we know where some of these funding sources are. But if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. If not, I believe I'll step on Billy's toes here. This really goes back to board discussion, and we want to hear from each of you going around the table from each of the governmental boards here about your thoughts on this initiative, whether this is what you still want to do, whether this is worth our time. And it may be that it's not. But if it is, now's the time for us to hear it, and we want to solicit your feedback and opinions. Uh, Mr. Davis, is there anything you want to add in? My vision of it, and I've started drafting it in concept, and Mr. Davis and I have spoken about it a little bit, would be that what we present to you for adoption will be an interlocal agreement that states these are the three entities to this agreement. This is our mission statement. This is what we're after. This is our goal. Water and sewer from the Choctatchee Bay to the city of Defuniac Springs plant. We recognize the need for it. We declare it to be a paramount interest. We'll include a section that represents, that is the goal of these entities, the goal of these three governmental boards to create an entity through 163 or through some other lawful means to carry out these goals and to go forward. So, no, we're not going to ask you to adopt a specific form of governance or form that this would take going forward because we don't know that yet. The difference between a special district and an authority are substantial. People often go to special districts because they want to levy some type of monetary assessment versus authorities are done when they're fully funded elsewhere. Well, an authority may still not even be the right answer here because if we're fully funded or funded in large substantial part through legislative appropriations, it may not be that we need a carrying system that will continue operating these entities. We simply don't know that at this point in time. We don't know how much grant money will be available across the board and not. So as we look at that, as we look at repayments, as we look at any obligations to any grantors, those will be what governs how it's structured. Mayor, my intent is that if everybody around these tables, I'm not asking for a motion, but unless we hear some huge dissent from one of the groups or unless one of these groups at whole gets up and walks out and says we're just tired of hearing about it, which I haven't seen happen yet, and you've humored us for 45 minutes, and that's a good sign, 
My intent would be to have for the City of Defuniax meeting Monday a draft interlocal on the agenda for the City of Freeport Tuesday morning and then for the BCC Tuesday afternoon. Um, I believe our offices will be able to have the legal nuances worked out between us so that if everybody is in agreement, it is there for you for either changes and review or if it meets your approval in concept and in term, we can approve it right then and then by this time next week, we would have an interlocal agreement in effect. But worst case, we would be able to catch it by the last meetings in December. I just, I, I really don't, after talking to Billy and after talking to some of the people at the state, to not put too fine a point on it, I, I really do fear that if we wait and try to put this together mid to the end of January and then send out whoever our representatives are locally to talk to our state representatives and senators, we've missed the boat if that's starting the end of January and February. We are so far behind where everybody else is. And, and you need to understand, I'm sure all of us have watched what's happened with the BP money. And there were assurances put in place that 75% of that money would come to the disproportionately affected counties. And we've seen the fighting over that happen. There are legitimate questions about whether that will still happen or not. The only way that we here in Walton County can absolutely take a chance at getting those funds is if we do so together. Because I can tell you the time of each individual government's going to go and ask for this and ask for that. That ship sailed. If anything, the legislature has made clear to us that piecemeal approach is not how they're going to divvy out these funds. We don't know how they're going to do it, but it's not going to be that way. That much I think Mr. Williams can tell you. He's been Absolutely. told don't ask. So. Is that right? <laughs> Any other questions? Clay, in this interlocal agreement, is this, I understand the purpose, you know, the, showing us unified. In the meantime, for example, for the city of Freeport, we know we need some offsite improvements that are fairly immediate for our needs. Would our city be still continuing to move forward in looking at funding sources for, for instance, for that particular project? Or would this interlocal agreement in essence mean that we all collectively have to go and start as a body, one group, looking for funding? Well, I think what the intent of the interlocal agreement would be is not so much to preclude any individual group that's a party of it not pursuing their own options, but it's rather making sure that there's a unified voice when we're out there looking so that we're not applying for one thing that may preclude something else in the future. Certainly, and Cliff may be better to address some of this because he's looked at some of the grant funding and some of the immediate improvement areas, our thought would be that, yes, the city of Freeport and city of Defuniac would continue working on their current capital improvement projects, their current plans that relate to this, because we have to. We don't know that this is going to come to fruition, and we're all encouraged that it can, mm -hmm. but we don't. So, no, I would never encourage either of you, and I don't think the county is encouraging either city, to stop its efforts at making immediate improvements. Certainly the more improvements we make or things we look at now lessens what we do in each step of the way. But what it would do is it would say, okay, now we're putting all of our capital improvements on this. All of the build out that will fall under this project is going to be something that we're going to be coordinating so that somebody knows, okay, if we just got a grant from RD to help do something and rural development's going to say, okay, we're going to come in, USDA's going to give us some money here. We know that's not something we need to have on a line item in the legislature for something when they say, well, wait, you already got funded for it. Why is this still on our sheet? So it's more about having that unified voice so that everybody knows what the concurrent goal is rather than working piecemeal. But no, it would not stop us from pursuing anything. And I don't think it should stop any of these entities from pursuing the options independently as long as we have a common goal. Yes, ma'am. I've got a question. I mean, it's kind of three-tiered. Uh, it's regarding grants that we've either applied for, future grants for the cities or the county, or ones that we've accepted. Is there going to be any penalty? Have we looked at that? Or we feel pretty good that we've looked at the grants that we've accepted in the past, that this grant isn't going to penalize us in any way or take away, or we're going to have to refund money because, uh, maybe it, it over, because of overlapping grants that we've accepted in the past? 
I, I think that's a great question, and we haven't drilled down to some of the things that the city particularly has done maybe with a, a previous USDA revolving fund type scenario. I don't think, as Clay is saying, any of that would bind us, et cetera. This, these are new link points uh, primarily with the major focus, so there's been no funding on the 331 corridor. I think what Cliff outlined with that first phase with the upgrade in moving that five, six million dollars to get to 331, we would have to review that. But part of the teams, and again, the teams have been great doing this, but part of the teams we would do that, we'll look at asset inventory, we'll look at basic what antiquated, what has that, so these technical things will come in. But I think, Casey, you asked a very good question. This should not prohibit anyone from continuing. It obviously should strengthen. For example, in my mind, when I go to the revolving fund, and I've got, a, as, as Cliff indicated, with uh, that potential with DEP, those are taxpayer dollars. The, the dollars that I'm trying to target are not taxpayer dollars. So if I can wheel and down and say, look, okay, put $10 million over here and appropriate it to DEP that was non-taxpayer money, but it falls back to the revolving fund, we'll look at every area where we could shift dollars, again, legally with the legislature, but if we can stay in that pot where it wasn't paid with taxpayer dollars, we have a lot better chance of being smart in the play. And I think between what Clay and um, Cliff have said about the toolkit, that is important. All of you represent folks that are being impacted, not only because of the, the demands and pressures of the development, but from impact fees and things of that nature. We're looking down the, the 331 corridor, we're looking at TIFs, we're looking at MSTUs or BUs and things that can be brought to bear. Because the equation, as Clay indicated, it's kind of unknown. I feel like I'm in a bad algebra class. I don't know what X is, you know, and I can't even start on that side or start on that side. But the issue is, is that when you look at a citizen and they look at you as the elected body and start talking about, well, who's paying for this development? Well, our first thing is, this is where we're trying to go with these non-taxpayer dollars. We're also looking for these different funds from USDA or rural where we can limit those strategies. So we're taking it all the way from the technical side all the way down to your individual citizen and what it means to them so we can you know, basically spread that cost or defer what their impacts would be. But we'll work on both questions that you ask. The interlocal to me gives us unity with at least a flag. It gives us the ability to continue what we're doing, to talk with our staffs, to ask for different guidance. This is expensive. You know, I, and I, I give Dewberry tremendous credit. Anna and them, when I came to her with deadlines on this one, October 1, and I came with her on another one on October 1, she did it. And that's because Cliff and her team put that together. So there's been a lot of work that we'll keep digging to answer your questions. Okay. I did a fabulous job of saying what needs to be in the interlocal agreement. But one of the things I, I've heard a couple of times is, the interlocal agreement should include a common goal, a, a proposed uh, that we'll commit to some structure, whatever that is, but also that we will commit to, we being all three entities here, will commit to resources being applied to do what's necessary to get done to get the, mo get, get the money in place. By resources, I mean admin administrative resources, legal resources, and engineering resources. In other words, we're not still going to go after money and not be committed to doing the internal stuff that's necessary. So the interlocal agreement will, will say something along the lines that not only are we agreeing to a goal and to a, a future structure, but that we're agreeing to commit resources in terms of staffing and, the, and that sort of thing. So just so you know. Ms. Nipper, to make one other point, too, I think when we talk about the public-private partnering, the CHELCOs and utility, we're also talking about our investment community, our economic partners that are out there. Part of what we've been doing also is looking at everything from Wayne's Farm to Miss Pickett's property with Pickett's Crossing and Owl's Head. We've developed specific strategies that we can demonstrate to the legislature as well as, okay, you're building this and you're showing me numbers of something that's not there yet, but we're actually showing them um, where we're building potential business and mega site scenarios. One of the things that was mentioned earlier about the RAO uh, which is the rural area of economic opportunity that the, the city of Freeport has, and they've been great to, to work with us in Opportunity Florida. That's a governor lift. We've got to go to the governor, which we've been doing, um, but meeting and talking about expanding that RAO up. If we do that, we get the exemptions to the grant uh, match points, et cetera, et cetera. But this also helps our business community and our citizens see, what are you doing? If I'm going to invest in 
that county, we've done that. With the Wayne's Farm, for example, we met with CSX. We met with the folks um, from Airbus to look at the, the inventory. We've got rail spurs. We've got all the things that are available. So we're building an economic profile that will go along with this that helps tell our story, and we're creating this economic uh, and environmental superhighway at 331. Uh, you mentioned how time is of essence. Uh, a question I ask, and I'm sure some of the others have, uh, we get all this done, when do we hear if we get the money or not? It, it, it would be the end of session. So the best guess I can tell you right now is on day 59, mm -hmm. before they go sine die, that's when you'll know, because there's going to be poker playing left and right. All right. That being said, there are some procedural things as far as committees and advancing that we do, and that goes back to what Clay had indicated. All of our people uh, that will be there, and again, with the new speaker, it's going to take, <laughs> take a lot of y'all, um, he wants to see elected uh, representatives there. But that will be very fluid through the session. You're going to see, you know, Senator Negron wants a billion dollars for education. He wants $2.3 billion for the Everglades. You know, all the economic forecasts and I are flatlined on an $80 billion budget. So as Clay indicated, we don't know. But we can at least get Titel. I mean, our, our delegation and the Panhandle delegation has been great. They like this model. So we'll give you what we know. But literally, uh, Commissioner, it could be day 59 of a 60-day session. But it will be in, the, in this session. Absolutely. Well, what will be addressed in this session will be the $300 million that's available. Now, we still have, as, as Casey talked about, there's other things we'll turn into the legislature, but absolutely, yes, sir, it starts March 1st, be for 60 days, and we will know, you know, when the, and the governor still has time to veto, so I can't say it's right at that 60-day uh, time, but we, so far, have felt comfortable if we can run this through, the governor would sign it, but we'll know in that 60-day session. So you think our chances are very good? I think you've got, and again, you're dealing with the Florida legislature, so I, you know, who knows. But I can tell you that we've had meetings with the Senate Appropriations Chair. Um, we've met with the Senate delegation and the House members in the panhandle. Um, we're working through them, and everyone likes this idea. Uh, Senator Gaynor has been awesome. Um, he basically said to me, we had a meeting with the three senators from Wakulla County over to Escambia. All I need to do is turn on the sewer for Walton County, and they're off to the races. He's been very supportive of the project. Um, Senator Broxson over in Escambia and Senator Munford. Um, we've twined all of these pieces in. You know, we've been meeting with folks like with the University of Florida, et cetera. So we're trying to hit the academic buttons or the environmental buttons. But so far, all the legislators have said, we like what you're doing. Okay. Thank you. So it looks like we start with interlocal agreement. I, I, I'm a timetable person. We, we you know, lobby the, lo the legislature. Can, are there things that we can do simultaneously so we don't put all the eggs in getting this money? Um, you said something about the state coming in to support us, to help us. At what point would the state come in to tell us all of our options? Clay's correct, and he and I met with, as he talked about, uh, with Atwater's office. I spoke with DEO. Um, what they've basically said for the time framing of this, we need you to tell us what you're geared down to. So the time frame he outlined, by, you know, that we get the uh, interlocal agreement to you at your next meeting. Before that meeting and basically coming into January, that, that your first meeting is in January, you all have decided on some type of structure. That would be the second step. Once we have that, uh, DEO and Atwater's office said that they would come in and provide all of the support structures to go back through. And again, that twines with a political path that we get with Brad and we get with, you know, George, et cetera, and we run through all of those pieces. But that would be the timing of it as we go through. The only thing that's a little atypical is, as I said earlier, Representative Corcoran or Speaker Corcoran has said that, you know, they better come day one with those projects. So we, we on his end, have to have that by March 1st. So a lot of this can be done through January up to session as far as the technical side. But Clay is exactly right. If we don't have this in their hands, because the big tent stuff's going on right now, it's not when they actually open the doors. We need to have them teed up, which, again, they are. They like it, but that's our time frame. Gotcha. Thank you.
That's a great question. It runs simultaneously um, because that has to, it'll be through session, but it would be the governor making that call through session. So it wouldn't be like Brad or, 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 Rep, or uh, Senator Gaynor doing it. Um, and, and we have had meetings in, in, in the governor's office to push this deal. So that's going on now. We'll need the Opportunity Florida to help us. We'll need resolutions from the city of Freeport to help us. But if I could go back to the governor and said, this is what we've done, uh, and show them the autonomous vehicles, the, the University of Florida, and the, all the things there, the governor's going to be a lot more inclined to do that. Um, and so I think as this is going, the best answer I can give you is simultaneous. Everything you're doing here arms me to have him and others that uh, will lobby him to, to be able to go forward. But that would be through session as well. Just a comment. I'm in total support of the 331 corridor project all the way from the bay up to the city of Defuniac. And it'd be nice if the legislature gave us the funding. Now, I've been around state government for a long time, not just in the last four years here with the county. And everything looks good. And the next thing you know, the bottom falls out. You don't get it. I'm just asking that the entities involved, as far as Freeport and the Funiac, to keep an open mind for other options that may be available there, such as uh, another utility company or some other mechanism in the event. Because if we just sit here and wait, in my opinion, up until May, sometime in May, before this final decision is made, then we've lost six months, and it, it, it may be a loss of six months, but we just I just think we ought to have more than one option on the table for consideration. Commissioner, I, 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 would, I would echo, number one, that is 100% right. The scenario here is that these dollars from the legislature being atypical and unusual, it, it, it demands our attention. But... I would say if none of these monies were even on the table, this is still what Walton County needs to do to move forward and that our toolkit, even though it would be reduced, but you're right, it, th this could easily happen where they get on day 30 or day 59 and they take $300 million to deal with, you know, something in the Everglades or an algae bloom or something. Uh, there is no, there is no, dependent factor and even though state statute at this point says that needs to happen that was codified in 2012 and they could change that instantaneously so we'll work as if it's you know it, we're going to come in but we come back and we get five million or we get ten million or we get zero everything we're doing will not be for naught it just changes our direction um, on what we're doing but you bring up a great point you can't tell if this is on is it can you, okay, Commissioner Chapman, um, to what you said, the city of Freeport is actively pursuing funding for our projects. We recognize that a new wastewater treatment plant <clears throat> is critical for us. And Cliff, give us, give them the time frame on that. If we were to right this minute decide that we were building a new treatment plant, what's, what's the, how long is that going to take for us? So if, for example, you had the money in your bank account and you said, well, I'm ready to start today, right. you'd be looking at a year of permitting and design and a year of construction. And so it's normally a three-year project. The first year is securing funding. The second year is design and permitting. And the third year is construction. And so if you got the money sitting in your bank account, you just cut a year off of it. Right. But you're still two years away and... Uh, you know, the question is, uh, it, you know, are you going to be ahead of the curve far enough two years from now? Right. I mean, that's the question. So that's why we are con actively. Dennis, do you want to speak to that to let him know? Well, and Cliff's been involved in a lot of these uh, meetings that we've had with rural development, and Ann and I have made several trips to Tallahassee. And, and it looks good, you know, when we meet with them uh, that we're going to be able to do something and, and get some funding. So uh, I think strength is in numbers as we go together. I, I, I do believe we should do this, but I also think we have to keep working just as hard as we can for our, each individual city uh, and see what we can do because we've got to have this plant. 
they are, our growth is going to have to stop, and that hurts the county and our workforce and everybody. So uh, we're, we're actively pursuing many, many funding sources. I'd like to say that the city of Defuniac is doing the same thing. We're continuing to go after grants because we know how much we have to do. Uh, I don't think any of us ever thought we'd have the opportunity to come together and maybe pull our resources and strengths in order to pull off the greatest uh, thing that we can do for our county. And if there is a silver lining to that oil spill tragedy, it is this. Um, we have an opportunity with money that is not taxpayer generated, and it's a one-time thing, and it requires us to do long-term thinking. Um, a lot of boards want to do the quick, easy projects they can put their name on and take credit for and look what we've done. This project, by the time it really ends and is completed, a lot of us may not even be in this office anymore. But a very smart fellow once told me, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. So if we can lay the groundwork now for the growth and development, commercial and uh, industrial, and for our population, our residential, um, we'll be doing great things for our cities and our county for decades to come. Long after we're gone, the work we do now will still be paying benefits. So uh, I will not try to speak for my whole council, but I certainly am, am fully uh, in, in favor of doing everything we can to move forward with this. And in the meantime, we're going to continue to do all we can to get the grants and do the things we need to be ready. certainly echo what Mr. Kelly says um, and, and what others have stated. I think this is a tremendous opportunity to, to um, put down our individual community interest and start thinking about one Walton County. Um, and as Ron says, there, there are a number of us that may not be here by the time this project is finished. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't uh, make a full court press to do what's right for our county. Um, and, and it's not just for the city of Phoenix Springs or the city of Freeport, but it's for our county. This very well may be the most important thing that we have the opportunity to do in our lifetime. <coughs> now that 331 is getting four lane, but, <laughs> but now we've got an opportunity to do something with it. We've waited for 60 years or more to get this four lane highway. Uh, it's now time to leverage that and all of us to come together and do what's right for our county. Well um, and I certainly can't speak for the rest of our council, but um, I think we're on the right track, and it's something that, that I hope we can all support. I agree with what uh, uh, they're saying, uh, but I fully agree that uh, uh, it's uh, great that uh, we would have an uh, interlocal agreement as, as a group working for all of Walling County and the cities is all in one group, and I think... Uh, and to what uh, they say, I, I agree on that, so I'm in favor of it. And I'd like to just thank Billy for what he has done and the hard work that he has put in this. And I will tell you, this is great for our county, for our cities, and of being able to show the citizens in our county that you can bring the governments, the elected officials, no matter who they are, together, and us work together to make something great for our county. And I just thank all of you. I thank the commissioners. I thank Cliff for what he's put together. And I thank both city councils for us being willing to sit down and work together and do what's best for the county. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I would just like to say one last thing. Uh, there's been a lot of focus on the economic development uh, that could come along with this project, but there's a tremendous environmental benefit as well. And we haven't spoken a lot about the environmental benefit, but we have over 600 septic tanks that are currently on the bay in the city of Freeport. Uh, and so w knowing that we have 600 septic tanks sitting there 
on the bay, you know, this is a this would be a big step in the direction of getting all those on the public sewer as well. And, and that's a great point for our community. One of the things that Commissioner Commander, uh, as the representative with the 23 counties, which is again a different pot, uh, we have advanced some strategies uh, and plans that again another deadline plan that Anna came up with and did. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to that. It's got to be approved by the governor and the federal council, et cetera. But we have advanced a strategy to help. Uh, that is our first leg going through. But I appreciate Cliff saying that because what brings our folks here, it obviously, is, the, is the, our, our, to me, why well, I'm here, the beautiful assets and what you have in the county. We need the jobs and things, but they're a hand-in-glove scenario. And if we take care of both, we'll, we'll be in great shape. So with that, unless there's any questions, Larry, or closing, or Madam Chair, I'll turn it back over to the Chair, and we can, we can go from there. We will keep you apprised of each step. Um, we use um, our folks, and we all have different folks on the field. We've got committee assignments. I'll start sending both cities the leadership uh, that's been appointed by both the Senate and the House um, and what we see this going through, because as you track this, and we get bills introduced or we get opposition and things. And unfortunately, it's like Battleship. If some of you have ever played that when you kids, B5, did I hit anything over there? But I'll send you all the information I have so you can see as we go through there. I encourage you to talk a lot to Brad, a lot to Senator, uh, Senator Gaynor, um, and look at those relationships and read you know, what's happening. Watch what the governor's saying or what Corcoran are saying because this is this is big ball. But I truly believe, and I appreciate your words, Eddie, this is about a one wanting concept where we're bringing our business, our environmental, our elected officials, and it's a clear path to the potential success. And if we fail, it wasn't our fault. It was somebody in South Miami that took our money. But it wasn't because we couldn't get our stuff together. So thank all of you for being open-minded. And if you have any questions, we're going to put the whole team, Larry, and our board's been great at pushing me and Melinda and others and those. So if you have any questions, reach out, even though they're not your, you know, particularly your staff, we're in this together. Latilda has been a tremendous tool for me there. Joe and the staff over here, the planners, everybody has worked together. So thank all of you. Okay. Madam Chair. Just in closing, I, you know, it's been a great meeting. That we're on the verge of just something so wonderful in Walden County. I remember when the, the, the um, 331 issue came up, I thought we will never get through, you know, but we kept believing, and the governor came through, and we did have to pay, you know, some for it, but we got it. And I believe this is the same case. I feel good. I feel confident that we're going to get it. I want to thank the work that Janice has already done. I believe this is your committee, and, and, and I haven't seen what Deviniac's done, but I'm sure it sounds like y'all have already been on the ball, too. So thank you so much for coming, and uh, let's just roll. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.